Hey, so as a recent game art graduate, it has never been more important than now to have a good portfolio and my favorite way of showing it is on a website. In this video, I'm gonna talk to you about the do's and the don'ts about making your own portfolio website. I'm gonna show you how I categorized my pages and designed my layout. And I'm gonna show you the previous two versions of my portfolio website and talk about why those did not work out. And make sure you stay until the end of the video because at the end, I'm gonna show you the portfolio website I made for my intake for the art school I just graduated from and let me tell you it was a big mess. First things first, what do you want to make and what do you want your future job to be? For example, I want to be a digital artist, I don't know if that's game art or like a freelancer artist, but I know my most important work is my digital art. A handy way to keep things organized for yourself and the viewer is pages and subpages. Since my skill set is quite varied, I make a lot of different things. I divided my portfolio website into two main categories and that is work and play. I split up my work page into two subpages and that's personal and internships. This way the viewer can see my best personal work, which gives me an opportunity to show my wide range of art styles. They can also see that I have experience already with working in a professional setting, which is very important for employers to see. If the viewer is hooked and they want to see more of your work, that's when they start looking at the play part of your portfolio. The play pages give you a good opportunity to show the viewer your other interests and a more specific set of skills. I divided my play page into three subpages, and that's sketchbooks, Inktober and crafts. I think showing your viewers your sketchbooks is a great way to show them your process and your way of thinking. Luckily for me, I have sketchbook tours on my YouTube channel, so I can just link those on my website. I also show my Inktober drawings on my portfolio because it perfectly describes what play is supposed to be. But it's also showing the viewer that I'm up to date with trends and that I joined trends. I think Inktober is also quite the achievement, especially when you manage to finish it. And lastly, I also show my crafts because that used to be a big part of my creative outlet. I love working with my hands and it might also be a, an important skill set for future employers to see. The last page on my portfolio is the about me page, but we're gonna save that for later. First, let's take a look at my previous two versions of my portfolio website website and talk about layout and design. Here's my current website compared to the previous two versions. What catches your eye first? The illustrations or that terribly bright yellow background in version 1? Yeah, that was a bad choice. That overpowering yellow color together with the tiny thumbnails of each drawing and the big chunk of text next to it wasn't a good choice at all. Everything kind of blurs into each other and the illustrations aren't the first thing you look at. Just keep it simple, keep the background white so your illustrations don't blend in and disappear. As you can see, with each version I also displayed the illustrations bigger and bigger. Your art should be the very first thing the viewers look at, so display your best work at the top and show them with pride. In my first version I had a subpage for more subpages, which makes things unnecessarily complicated and boring for the viewer. They're not gonna click five times just to see one page. Just straight up give the viewers what they want to see with as little clicks as possible. In some of occasions it's important to give the viewers a bit of information. Like my internship page. It's necessary to let the viewer know what your role was in these professional projects, especially for possible future employers. I simply explained my role in the team and what part of the project I made. On my sketchbook page I wrote down the amount of time it took to fill each sketchbook and how many pages there were. Just as little fun fact. And on the Inktober page I wrote down what my learning goal was for each Inktober because I always take Inktober as an opportunity to learn something new. But the most important bit of information your viewer needs is on the About Me page. First and foremost you need a good picture of yourself without a Snapchat filter. Besides that, I've always put in this little text section with basic information like who I am, how old I am, what do I do, and how did I learn my skills. Through the different versions, I slowly came up with a more professional way to introduce myself. And now in the last version, I also added an artist statement. I got this handy tip from my boyfriend who is a film student. He told me it's important to share with the viewers what your vision is and what the reason is behind making these drawings. What story are you trying to tell with your art. I think the first bit of information is personal and then the artist statement is a more professional point of view. And this is how I 
set of mine. I looked at my illustrations and projects and wrote down the three most important points that were common in all my drawings. My word that I pay very close attention to detail, I use a wide range of art styles and I always ask the client for plenty of feedback. So I took those three points, made them sound a bit more professional and voila, my artist statement. The bottom of the about me page is the perfect spot to promote your social medias. I've always linked my Instagram at the bottom since that's my most important social media account because that's where I post all my art as soon as it's finished. In the first version of my website, I only have my other socials linked on the about me page and nowhere else on the portfolio. But I think it's way smarter to place these buttons on the banner of your website. So no matter which page the viewer is looking at, there's always these social media buttons in the corner. I did delete the contact form mostly because I was still in school and not actively looking for a job but now that I'm looking back at it I should probably add it again. <laughs> and that's how I designed my portfolio website. Now let's take a look at the terrible portfolio website for my intake from five years ago. Okay first off the home page is just another menu for four sub pages which is terrible. The color palette is awful. The blue and the pink are way too light to even make a difference between each other or the white background itself. The title font is giving 2010 teenage girl which is cringe and the font I used for my name is cool and edgy but also makes the text blurry and way harder to read. I made a section for every drawing so I could also show a bit of the process. Good idea, messy execution. Everything is too close to each other, there's not enough space between every drawing and all the process is just thrown randomly into each section. It's a mess. During the intake, I think we looked at only two of the four pages, which is a shame of my work, but it does make sense. It's too much effort to click through all the pages, and what if they missed my most important stuff, my digital drawings? Thankfully, I did get accepted, and now four years later, I graduated from that same art school. If you're interested in my art journey and want to see all the art I made these four years at that art school, in my previous video, I showcase all the art I made in those four years. And you can see very clearly how much my art skills have improved. I'll link the video in the description just like my other socials so you can follow me on your favorite app. Don't forget to subscribe and then I'll see you in the next video. Bye!